Hello again and welcome back to that handicapping show at bloodhorse.com. I'm Tom Lamar joined by Claire Novak. This week's show is sponsored by Calder Casino and Racecourse, which on Saturday, July 6th, will offer the Summit of Speed, six races, four of them graded, and Claire and I will be looking at two of those races on the show today, the Smile and the Princess Rooney. They both drew full fields of 12. They're excellent betting races. There could be a strong favorite in each one. They both look pretty good, but these races are pretty deep, uh, especially with the local horses. They um, like the racing surface at Calder. They may not have faced top competition, but they're extremely dangerous. And we'll talk about a couple of those horses on the show today. We're gonna to start with the Smile Field of 12 pre-scratch. Six furlongs, grade two, loaded with good horses, a few old ones that we haven't seen for a while, which Claire will address. And of course, last year's British Cup Sprint winner, Trini Berg, who's based at Calder and has been working very well for his return. Claire, how do you see this one shaping up? Well, I've taken a look at three horses that I really like in here. And of course, you have to give some respect to Justin Phillip, who just ran a huge race in the True North Handicap at Belmont. It was second to his stable mate. Uh, and that horse, you know, he seems to be in very good form right now. The Belmont race was extremely strong. And so uh, came into that second with a couple of wins underneath his belt and a grade three win. So I'm going to take a look at him as somebody that I would include. And then Swagger Jack is a horse that I do like, the Carter Handicap winner. He didn't run so well in the Metropolitan. He finished seventh, but I'm just going to kind of toss that race. And uh, back to Justin Phillip, if you look at our Briz speed figures, he does rank very highly across all of the uh, different ways of telling if a horse is doing well. So I like him a lot. And then, like you said, Jackson Ben, our old favorite. And I know that maybe some people laugh when you take a look at this horse. You know, he had the accident in Saratoga and then they were going to retire him to stud. They retired him, but he still had some hind end issues that they didn't want to start breeding with him. So they put him in the light training to help get these issues resolved. And he kind of showed them that he just wanted to go on and train from what I understand. He came back off the layup uh, first time since September of uh, last year he ran fifth on June 8th in a stakes race at Calder and this is a horse who started his career at Calder for Stanley Gold before he went on to Nixito and uh, won multiple grade one races so I'm going to look at him to improve off the layup and I definitely think you have to respect him because we do know he's very talented and one thing that he showed through all of his races um, was extreme tenacity so if he comes back the same type of horse that he was when he was in top form he could be dangerous here. Okay. There looks like there could be a lot of speed in this race. Of course, you never know what will happen when the gate opens. Um, I'm going to pick uh, Trini Berg, um, which Claire laughed at me earlier for picking him. But <laughs> He's a good horse. Uh, I'll give you that. The I mean, Breeders' yes. Cup sprint winner last year uh, did not race well in Dubai, of course, on the synthetic surface. Came back very quick in the uh, Churchill Downs handicap about a month later. Caught a sloppy track, went seven furlongs, which is probably not ideal. Uh, speed and fade, but uh, has been back at Calder, training really, really well. Um, only raced at Calder twice, but has a win in a second. What I like about him in this particular spot is, is that he drew the outside post. He drew an outside post in the Breeders' Cup sprint, and I think that helped him because he was able to clock the inside speed on the outside. Um, not sure what the price is going to be here because, you know, we have off the jack in this race. Justin Phillip, as Claire said, Swagger Jack, Fort Loudon, another Stanley Gold horse that had been trained by Nick Zito. Mm -hmm. And Trickmeister, who also uh, ran okay in his first start of the year. He drew the rail, which I don't think that that's necessarily a good spot in here. So I'm going to go with Trini Berg looking to bounce back. I do agree with Claire on... Uh, Swagger Jack and one other horse uh, from off the pace. I think this local horse close it out. Um, if it's just a, a you know a freaky speed show, I think he has a chance to uh, crash the ticket. So. Yeah, this is a great field. I mean, kudos to Calder for getting all these really nice horses in here. It should be a really good race. I'm excited to watch it. Absolutely. The uh, Princess Rooney is a Grade One, also at six furlongs. Again, a field of twelve entered. Uh, lots of ways to go here, Claire. Um, 
I know you uh, have one horse in mind, so you can talk about that. Well, I have three that, if you look at it, I mean, there's obvious class in the field, and the, the class of the field is Renee's Got Zip, but there's questions to answer as far as, this is her first time racing mm -hmm. outside of California, it's her first time back off the layup, she hasn't raced since December 26, when she was second by a neck in the La Brea, um, you know, Resume-wise, talent-wise, she's the horse to beat in here, but coming back off the layup, I wouldn't be surprised if she needs a race or two. And also, there is that question, you know, she's going to ship for the first time and, and run for the first time outside of California. So, um, another horse that I've heard a lot about leading up to this race is Judy the Beauty. It's really interesting to note that Wesley Ward hasn't ever won a grade one as a trainer. I didn't know that. And so, he's looking for his first grade one with Judy the Beauty. This horse has never been worse than second. She has uh, four wins and five seconds in nine lifetime starts. And she's had a couple of really narrow, almost grade ones where she didn't quite get up. One was in the Prioress, where she had a bad break. She came running, she got the lead, and then she got nipped by Emma Zoncor and lost by a nose. That was last year. So she comes off a good second in the winning colors. Um, I think she's a really classy filly. I wouldn't be surprised if she's the favorite. Another horse in here that I like who's very good is Holiday Soiree. This is a filly who you wouldn't expect to have really run as well as she did in the Humana Distaff, which is a grade one. She ran third. Um, and since uh, the Macaulay's got her, she hasn't been any worse than third. She has two thirds and a second since they picked her up. And so I would look for her to show up in here, and I, I really like her as kind of a hard trying horse who's running above her class level. All right, I'm with you on Hollywood Soiree. We'll absolutely use her. I'm waiting for her to win the big one. Um, she did draw the rail in this race, but she's not an early speed type. She can hang close, but um, she may need a really, really good ride uh, here. Um, Macaulay named Kendrick Carmouche from the Mid-Atlantic to come down and ride her. Mm -hmm. um, I believe she was entered in the stakes at Mountaineer on Tuesday night of this week. She was scratched. It was a one-mile turf race, um, which seemed a little bit odd anyway. And then, of course, it came off the turf, but this might be the right spot for her. I agree with Judy the Beauty. I agree with what you said about Renee's God Zip. The horse that I'm going to pick on top probably will be a price, uh, Sweet Cassiopeia. Um, you she's just like mainly, her name. Well, I do like her name, but that's what's the point. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just no, lost she, my train of thought. She was a very good, she, very, very good filly earlier on. She ran a nice streak of races. Though, she did. Um, she's mainly run on turf and synthetic. Um, she's running up a pretty good bankroll, almost a half million dollars for Bill Connolly. She's going to go back to the dirt, and she's only raced once on the dirt out of uh, 20 starts, and that was last year in a uh, 100 grander at Mountaineer on West Virginia Derby Day. And she really did win that race impressively in mm -hmm. 109 and 1. Um, I don't know why she doesn't run on the dirt more often, but I'm willing to take a shot with her. She's one for one on the dirt. I think she's very classy. And when you come out of those five furlong turf sprints, you know, you're chasing ridiculous fractions. and um, if she's fit, I think she's got a good shot. So I'm going to pick her on top with a couple other horses that we already mentioned. So those are the two races that we're featuring on this week's show. Again, sponsored by Calder Casino and Racecourse. The Summit of Speed, lots of good races on Saturday, July 6th at the South Florida track. And again, we thank Calder. We thank Briss for the past performances. For Claire, I'm Tom. We'll see you next week on That Handicapping Show.